All right, here's another one. Here's another one I, I want us to react to. And it's it's from, he's he's my guy. I don't want to admit it as much because I do like him. I do respect him. Uh, it is Evan Roberts of WFAN, man. Here, here's what he had to say about Game 7 and the Knicks fans saluting their team. Here's, here's what this fraud had to say. Here's Evan Roberts. What I do not understand from a lot of Knicks fans today is how you're okay. I don't understand that. I don't understand the thank yous. I don't understand the tears. I don't understand the chance. I don't understand the standing ovations that were given out yesterday. And maybe that says more about me that I am broken Mm. as a sports fan. But when my team loses, it doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter why. When they lose and the season ends... Mm. I do not sit there and act like, well, we accomplished a lot, and that was a lot of fun. (laughs) I don't understand that. The facts are the New York Knicks got eliminated in the second round of the postseason. The same place they got eliminated one year ago. Mm -hmm. Facts. The facts are they had a lead in Game 3 with a 2-0 series lead, and they blew it. Facts. The facts are they got blown out in a Game 7 at home. Facts. And here are the other facts. Yes, the Knicks were ravaged by injuries. I don't deny that. That doesn't make me feel better. It never did, and it never will. So what I don't understand about my fellow New Yorkers is what happened to you. Why are we celebrating? Mm. Why are we happy? Why are we smiling? Why are we saying thank you? Do I have to be the voice of reason? I'd be pissed. No. I'd be angry, uh, and on. I'd be devastated that my season ended. What do you say about that? So, well, I I was about to ask, is this guy from New York? Because I, I don't know. So, who, so Roberts, person. Evan Roberts, he, he's the host of the Evan and Tiki show on WFAN. On, uh, oh, on, okay. On well, that makes more sense, because I was going to say, yes. this sounds like a yes. Philadelphia... Oh, he, oh, he's he, listen. To, well, listen to how much of a fraud he is. He's a Nets fan. He's oh, a New Jersey well, Nets fan with Nick season NCAA tickets. Answer. He's no, a New I mean, Jersey Nets on. fan with Nick season tickets. He's as big as a fraud as they come. But what do you think, man? Well, I, I, I think that he's doing radio and he's getting engagement because you just played it on your show mm. and you wouldn't have played his segment if it was a very level headed take. It wouldn't have made yeah. this segment. I mean, there is a business. In coming out with, he may honestly believe that uh, without the agenda and just an anti Knicks, uh, an anti Knicks stance in New York will get you a lot of views. It may not be the quality of views that are positive, but it gets you views. And if you're in the business of driving, I mean, maybe I'm just, I live in my own little bubble by myself. Yeah. And, uh, I, I try and avoid all of these these hot takes that yeah. are not within. Because you know, my, my you know energy. how the game goes. You know how the game. Goes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just. I know too much about the business. So when yeah, I hear I something like that, yeah, it's clearly designed to solicit a reaction from fans. Yeah. And in 2024, the outrage reaction drives a lot more dollars than the positive one because you get more more numbers, and that's just the way that the business works. Yeah. So I want to. I, I don't know who this person is, so he may earnestly just despise the Knicks yeah. and or believe that. So I'll give him a little bit of credit in that regard. But um, I I would not – every Knicks fan, we talked about it at the top of the show, sees the franchise through a different lens. We appreciate this team because of how it reminds us of the 90s. The younger fans love this team because it is as far – as the Knicks have gone in their lifetimes. You also see that there is a light at the end of the Lincoln Tunnel in terms of future and potential. And if you were alive for those 2000s, knowing how this team loved to liquidate all of its assets for a win now type culture of those mercenaries at the end of their career, knowing that there is not a chance in hell this team sees a conference finals. Like there is never a winning long-term strategy there. Yeah. So yeah. We're, we're only used to, for the most part, other than those 90s, we'll, we'll treat that as an outlier. For the last 20 years, not 30 years, Knicks fans have become so accustomed to being either made fun of or doing things the incorrect way that all it takes is just the bare minimum for our spirits to be high. So I'm not going to apologize for that. 
because we sure as hell have put in the time and effort in getting to this point. You said it all right there, bro. You, you said it all right there. I mean, the Knicks fan has gone through so much that, yes, we're going to applaud our guys. The Knicks fan is the smartest fan in the game. They've seen the blood, sweat, and tears. They've seen the blood and guts that these guys left out there on the court. They've seen it. They've seen the battles against Philadelphia. They understood that with every injury, the margin of error became less and less. And and I said I said this yesterday, there's not a team in the NBA that would have overcome the amount that the Knicks did and gotten to where they got. There's not one team in the NBA that would have done that. You look at every single NBA team and you remove three, four starters from their team, they're not getting as far as the Knicks. I can promise you that. So with all that said and done, yes, it was disappointing that they couldn't get to the Eastern Conference Finals, which was the goal. Yes, it was disappointing that they were up 2-0 and they lost in Game 7. It was definitely disappointing watching that in Game 7 in horror as the Pacers were bombing away. But you just knew at the end of the day, this team gave it everything that they had. And as you said, Rob, the books are clean. They got assets galore. You have a superstar emerge on the main stage. You have an all-star in the waiting. We'll see what happens with Randall as we talked about on this show. They're in a great spot. This franchise, I said it when, when I when I, when I ethered Draymond Green because he ran and he was on the same uh, uh, LOL Knicks train. The team has been in the best shape that it's been in 25 years. Easily. And just just a quick side note to to wrap up this this thought. Okay, let's say the Knicks win game seven somehow against the Pacers. Alec Burks carries them to a uh, unprecedented historic comeback until later that night when yeah. the Timberwolves set the record for the biggest halftime uh, deficit overcome. But they would have held the record for six hours and they win. They go to the conference finals without Jalen Brunson, who has a broken hand. And right. we spend the next week losing by 30 points every single night Getting to a 60 plus win Boston Celtics team. And then, and then what? You have the same amount of wins. They were not winning a single game without Taylor. They I'm were sorry. gonna get swept, man. They Embarrassing were gonna get swept fashion. by the Celtics, bro. So what? I mean, what what was even left at that point? That was realistic. Yeah. Circumstances change, man. Circumstances change. But as you said, you know Roberts and all these guys. There's a clear agenda when it comes to the orange and blue, but the Knicks fans see right through it. They see right through it. Draymond and all these guys. Get these guys out of here, man. Shout out to Rob Perez for tapping in with me. All the way from the West Coast, man. <laughs>